kave v'ekra Evrika, Evrika, lifne Adonai osi V'anit filati leka Adonai et ratzon Elohim berov kasteka Aneni b'emet yisheka Aneni b'emet yisheka and shall we face towards the temple in Jerusalem for the Shema? Barkut Adonai HaMivorach Baruch Adonai HaMivorach Le'lam Vahed Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malkuto Le'olam Vayed Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. Blessed be his glorious name. His kingdom is forever and ever. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloheka v'kol levavaka u'v'kol nashaka u'v'kol me'odeka v'hayu hadvarim ha'ele asher anuchi mitzavaka היום על לב הבקה, ובשינתם לבניך, ודיברת הבם, בשבתך בביתך, ובלקתך בדרך, ובשקבך ובקומך, וקשרתם לאות על ידך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזיזו ביתך, ובישרקה. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be for frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. <clears throat> Let's have the reader's cottage, please. Yit kada, yit kadash, shimei raba. Ve al ma divrakirute, ve chan lik malkute, ve chaye chon u yo mechon, u vkaye de kobeit Yisrael, ba gala, ba gala, u vizman kariv, vimaru, amen. Yehe shimei raba mevora, leolam ulal me almaya, Yit barach, v'yishtabach, v'yipar, v'yitromam, v'yitnaseh, v'yithadar, v'yitale, v'yithalal, shemei rekudusha, b'riku, l'elam inko berkata v'shirata, tush bechata v'nechemata, t'amiran b'alma, v'yimaru, amen. Oh, she shalom b'imromav, who ya say shalom aleinu ve al kol Yisrael vimru vimru amen ya say shalom ya say shalom shalom aleinu ve al kol Yisrael ya say shalom ya say shalom Shalom Aleinu ve'alko Yisrael Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu ve'alko Yisrael Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu ve'alko Yisrael V'imru, Amen Magnified and sanctified be the name of God throughout the world, which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during the days of your life and during the life of all of the house of Israel speedily, yes, soon, and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed and praised and glorified, exalted, extolled, honored, and magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he. 
whose glory transcends, yes, is beyond all blessings, and hymns and praises and consolations that men can offer unto him and say, Amen. May he who establishes peace in the heavens grant peace to us and to all Israel and say, Amen. Uh, Vishamru. Vishamru b'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat la-asot et ha-shabbat le-dorotam berit olam Vishamru b'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat la-asot et ha-shabbat le-dorotam berit olam B'nei Uvein, B'nei Yisrael, Od hi le'olam, Od hi le'olam. V'shamru B'nei Yisrael, eh, ha-shabbat, la'asot et ha-shabbat, le'dorot ha'mberit olam. Ki sheshet yamim, asaronai, et ha-shmaim, ve-et ha-aretz. V'shamru b'nei Yisrael, eh, ha-shabba, la-asot et ha-shabba, le-dorot ha-mberit olam. Uvayom ha-shvi, Shabbat v'yinafash, Shabbat v'yinafash, Shabbat v'yinafash. Vishamru b'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat La'asot et ha-shabbat le-dorot ha-mberit olam Vishamru b'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat La'asot et ha-shabbat le-dorot ha-mberit olam Amen Uh, okay, as long as it's, well, okay. And that brings us right to the Torah service. Those who are participating. Everyone should be participating in the Torah service. And did I, did I have a, a, a volunteer for blessings this morning? I don't I don't remember whether we anybody discussed it last week. Maybe. Hello, Shane. I think he's on the board. Okay. Okay. There. I know somebody hadn't done it in a long time. Yeah. Who? Well, she already volunteered. And I'm not supposed to do it for myself or for my own reading. Yeah, it hasn't been in a I mean, I can, but... In a long, long time. Long uh, Shall I let you out? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Is that what you're waiting for? Yeah. yeah. Are you waiting for me, too? Yes. <laughs> waiting for you, too. <laughs> waiting on you. <laughs> oh, we need this table cleared. Uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> All right. Next. Oh, well, we got some new visitors this morning. Maybe. Yeah. Vayehi ben so Aaron, vayomer Moshe, kuma Adonai. Via futsu oyeveka, via nusu misaneka, mi paneka, ki mitzion tetse Torah, 
כי מציון תצא תורה ודבר אדוני מירושלים ברוך שנתן תורה תורה ברוך שנתן תורה תורה לעמו ישראל בקדושתו שמע ישראל אדוני אלוהינו אדוני אחד אחד אלוהינו גדול אדוננו כהדול שמו גדלו לאדוני הייתי ונראו ממה שמו יחדיו לך אדוני הגידולה והגיבורה והתפארת והנצח וההוד כי כה בשמיים וארץ כי כה בשמיים וארץ לך אדוני הממלכה והמתנשא לכל ראש רוממו אדוני אלוהינו והשתקבו להדום רגליו קדוש הוא. רוממו אדוני אלוהינו והשתקבו לכר קדשו כי קדוש אדוני אלוהינו. אדוני אלרחם וחנם ארץ הפיים ורב חסד ואמת, נוצר חסד לעם לאפים, נושא עוון ופשע וקטע ונקה. Okay, we have some visitors today. Would you two like to come up and see this close? I'll show you something really fun about it. Okay. Is ready and ready, ready, ready? <laughs> Come on up, girls. Just come right up here. We didn't ever touch the paper with our hands because we use this pointer, okay? And I wanted to show you some stuff. First of all, this is Hebrew. It's not English. Can you tell that? Yeah, <laughs> you're very bright girls. Look at that. Okay, so we read it right to left instead of left to right like English. So we start over here and read that direction. And this is by the bear Yahweh El Moshe Lemur. And here's the name of, of God, Yahweh. It's got a little bitty Hebrew letter that sticks way up in the air, high as all the other letters on the top of the letters. You see that? And this is Yud, He, Vav, He. The first letter of God's name is a Yud, the smallest of all the letters. And it says, God is always up in the heavens looking up, looking down on everything. And so that's why it's the smallest letter and it's up in, way up high in the sky. Okay. Um, next, I want to show you that uh, Jesus told us that if we got rid, of, if we could get rid of a yud or a tittle out of the Bible, then 
heaven and earth would come to an end and all of the prophecies of the Bible would stop, would cease. But we see here there's still the Yud there in the Torah, isn't it? Can you see where I'm pointing? Uh -huh. I guess it's not up on the screen yet. Okay. So I'll hold I'll this here until it gets there. there. Bring, Bring it on up here so, so we can, can see, see the, the name, name of God. God here. Yeah. Oh. Turn purple on me. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. I could have zoomed here because okay, so, more clarity. So right here. Oops. Straighten it out, folks. <laughs> Can you get that up there, David? Okay, I'm settled down already. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> okay. See that little bitty mark right there on the page? That's the first letter of God's name. And Jesus said that you won't get rid of one jot or one tittle out of the Bible until heaven and earth come cease to exist. We have an earth still, don't we? We're standing on it, right? And we have the heavens. You can look up in the sky and see the stars in the heavens, right? And so the yud is still there. The, that's the smallest letter. And it also says jots and tittles. Now, if you look over just a few letters, you see a letter. And this one is called shin. Now, get a little closer so you can see. But there are three little bitty tiny dots there. And they're touching the tops of the letters. They, they got a little line connecting them. Can you see that? Those are what he called tittles. So he says not one tittle will be done away with from the Torah until heaven and earth pass away. <laughs> well, there it is in the Torah. But you don't see that in the English Bible, do you? So these are things that God promised would be. And here they are right here in front of us. Now, do you see how the, this, uh, all this writing looks so neat and pretty, right? How did they get it to be that, that way? way? Well, well, they, they scratch little, little line, line marks, marks in the paper, paper. So, so that there's a little line in the paper, paper that goes across, like, like the, right, right here. here. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's a little, it's so faint you can barely see it at all. Yeah, that's one right there. Uh -huh. And so these lines are how they keep the letters straight. So they make all the letters at the top okay. are on that line. Okay. And so why'd they do that? Because they wanted it to look pretty. And it does, doesn't it? And then we have also a scribe mark that goes the same way, up and down on the right and left sides of the columns. And, yep, right there it is. You've got to get eyes. Okay, so these are uh, ways that we make the Bible look better, look nice and pretty and organized for God. And then we also have... Um, uh, we have the columns. These are these are sewn together. Um, let me show you this right here. See, this is where the edges of the paper are, and they sew them together right there. And they use uh, uh, skin, little tiny strips of skin, in order to sew these things together from the animal. This is actually uh, like a goat skin or lamb skin, and they take little strips of it and they make it into yeah, threads. Like right. right. Mm -hmm. And so these are that's how they make these pages stay together, and it doesn't fall apart. You know, if you tried to use paper to sew paper together, it'd fall apart in a week, wouldn't it, or less? But uh, here, this is this. Do you know how old this scroll is? Yes. It's probably close to a hundred years old. Why can't we touch it with our fair hands? Because it makes get oil spots get on it, and we don't want it to get oily or. That's why it's all in yeah. Okay. So that's not where anybody touched it, but it's just so old that it's getting some uh, little defects in the surface of the skin. Okay? So anyway, we have, uh, uh, it's also fastened to two pieces of wood. What does that remind you of? Is that the way Yeshua, Jesus was? He was, he was uh, hung on a, on a tree, on a cross, right? Okay, so that reminds us of that. Okay, so 
Anyway, this is uh, the Torah scroll, and it's very important to us, so we take good care of it, and hopefully it'll last another hundred years. Hoo-hoo. Right? <laughs> a hundred is a long time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's what the Torah is like. Which would be hmm? years. Yeah, then it would be 200. We don't know exactly how old this one is, so. But hopefully, one of these days, we'll be able to get the funds together so we can buy a new scroll, and then it'll be a lot easier to read, won't it? You know, kind of. If, if you would sell this, wouldn't it be worth a lot of money? Well, it would be worth money to us because we need it. <laughs> 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 this is how we read the Torah in the original language so that we can see here. It says, this is Vaidabir Yahweh El Moshe. The more, the word of God unto Moses, and he said, Shalach lecha anashim, and that means send forth for yourself men. And the, remember the story of the 12 spies? Did you get that? Did you learn that story about the 12 spies that went into the promised land to look it over? Okay, well, that's what our Torah Parsha is about today, and this is where it starts in the, in the Torah scroll right there. And we're going to talk about that some more. You like that? Okay. And uh, it's really a beautiful message. Beautiful message from God. It's, it's eternal. Well, thank you for coming up and thank you for being here. Okay? All right. You can go back to your seat now. I'm going to ask our Chazan, Yochanan, to come and uh, read for us from read for us from the Torah. Senor Yochanan. Yamoda Shira Batsara La Torah. Right here. Yeah, it's a good spot right there. <laughs> Barhu et Adonai Hamevorah, Baruch Adonai Hamevorah Leolam Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Rakabanu Miko Haamin, Venatalanu et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Noten Torah. Amen. Amen. Can that be moved? Yes. No, not that. The other one. Oh, that one? What? Yeah. Yeah, usually. It's a little in the way. So we are still in the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 13 is the start of our Parsha today. And like Rabbi just said, the name of the Parsha is Shalak, means to send forth. I thought it was Shalak, like I'm going to slug you. You're going to shalak me? Oh, that's an English word, isn't it? That's actually an English uh, pukinism. No, never mind. <laughs> Take it off the gloves. <laughs> Okay, we are ready. Vayidabar Yahweh el Moshe lemor, shilach lecha anashim, viaturu et eretz kanaan, asher ani noten lifne Israel, ish echad, ish echad, lemate avotav tishlachu, Kol nasi vahem, vayishlach otam Moshe, mimidbar paran al pi Yahweh, kulam anashim, rashi b'nei Israel hema. Amen. Amen. And he spoke Yahweh to Moshe to say, send for yourself men, and they shall, uh, and they shall, um, well, we we like to use tour, but and, and that's probably where our word comes from. 
Mm-hmm. And they shall explore. I is one of the translations. They, sh- they shall explore the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel, man one, man one, for the tribe of their fathers. Uh, you shall send them, same root word there, Tishlachu, all uh, princes in them. And he sent, there it is again, Vayishlach. And he sent them. Moshe, from the wilderness of Paran, on the bidding of Yahweh, all of them men, heads of the children of Israel, they were. Amen. Amen. So what two men did they send in to the land here? What, twelve men? They sent in two men this time. It was Joshua one of the men they sent in? This isn't this isn't the book of Joshua. This it's, is a, Yeah. That's this, right. This is where they where Moshe sent in twelve men. Oh, is this the one where they sent the names of the twelve first? Okay. Yeah, one, one, one for each tribe. Oh, yeah. And Joshua and Caleb were the only ones with a good report. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I was thinking ahead to uh, the book of Joshua where they actually went in and they sent two men in to spy out the, the, uh, the, land. the land, especially uh, the... Um, Jericho. Jericho, the town of Joshua city of Jericho. Fit the bad, right. By Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Yeah. And the walls <laughs> came tumbling down. Yeah. Oh, final blessings. Do we have a blessing, please? Baruch Ata Adonai. Hang on. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asir Natalanu Torah Emet. Vechaye Olan Nata Betocheinu. Baruch Ata Adonai. Nautain HaTorah. Amen. Amen. That's an upside down nun there. That's a that's a marking. What does nun represent? Um, Messiah. Messiah, heir to the throne. And what does it say here? Vayihibin so Aaron, vayomer Moshe, kuma Adonai, efutsu oyeveka, veyandusu mishaneka, mipaneka. And then it stops there. And then the <laughs> next part goes. Keep There's something down. else there. Ah! <laughs> but the, yet yeah, it has an upside down noon on both sides of, of that very sentence. It's so interesting. It's mystical. It's just beyond comprehension. And it was when the ark would travel. Travel. Moses would say, Kuma Yahweh. Rise, Rise up. O Lord. Let your enemies be, be, cast, be scattered. Be scattered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we already sang that today. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. I love the Torah. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to. Oh. Dancing round the table, round the table with the Torah in our arms. We're dancing. But <laughs> Rabbi, that's not one of the songs we sing. V'zod <laughs> HaTorah, <laughs> Ashir Samoshe, Lipne Bnei Yisrael, Abhi Adonai. Behind Moshe. This is the Torah which was placed by Moshe before the children of Israel from the mouth of Adonai in the hand of Moshe. Amen.
Oh, yeah, T's back on. You warned me. <laughs> I should have. Not even close. <laughs> See, we used to have uh, Ron Troster here, and he always did this. Uh, yeah, nice and slow, so we wouldn't forget anything. Yeah. <laughs> he did. Took good care of the Torah. We miss you, Ron. I don't know if you're watching online or not. Hope you are. Hmm? Yep. King David had the Es chayim hi lemakazikim ba v'tomekea meushar derakea darke noam v'kol nativotea shalom hashivenu adonai. Elekavena shuva Kadesh, Kadesh yameinu Kadesh yameinu kekedim It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of Amen. Old. Amen. You want to do the teaching this morning? Is it, is it over? Not quite. We're going to have a, a little teaching on that scripture that we read. Uh, we might, but. Huh? You're so good at uh, operating the, the, the Bible. I'm not. I never have to, I never have gotten good at it. Okay. All right, are you going to join me up here? Or are you going to just sit back in the audience and teach your short portion? Well, you pour out, you get more living water to go with it. <clears throat> That's how we can keep going week after week. I have one guy, who was it? I forget who it was now, but, uh, oh, it was, it was Rabbi Settle. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when I was training him, when he first started teaching from the front, he was trying to come up with things to say every week about the Torah Parsha. And one day he got up there and he says, 
Rabbi, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I just run empty, you know. I want it. And I said, well, you learn to trust in God to put, fill in the blanks. And he went, oh, yeah. <laughs> and after that, he was doing real good. He's, yeah. So anyway, it's God's word. We have to depend upon him to fill in the blanks and to help teach these materials. <clears throat> He's still the same God he's always been. Amen. So you're not going to join me up here? He wants to be on the front. I want to not be alone up here at the front. <laughs> you feel all alone. Oh, yeah. You're not. All right, let's get the uh, Bible up here. And it starts off, of course, by the bear Yahweh El Moshe Lemor. The word of Yahweh to Moses, and he, he was saying, and let me get my other props up here in case I need them. Uh, shalak. Now, I thought that was the same word that we use to coat wooden furniture with after we build it. Little distractions, Sorry. okay. So he says, Shalach lecha. Shalach is a word that means literally to send forth. And it meant to you. Well, if they're sending them forth to me, then they're not going very far, are they? <laughs> well, that could mean for, for you also. Exactly. Send for you. So you send forth anashim, men, and they will uh, search out or to explore it. It eretz kinaan. They are going to go search out the land of promise, which I give unto the children of Israel. Every let's see. This is bad translating right here, but there's no way to translate it properly into English and have it be good English. And so this is about the best they could come up with. And uh, there's some smart guys figuring it out, so I can't argue with the way they translated it. But I can tell you that it's far short of the actual meaning. Yeah. Okay? In Hebrew, it says, Ish Echad, echad one. Mm -hmm. Man Echad, one. And then it repeats it, man echad, every man, man echad, man echad. That means literally a man here and a man there. <laughs> two men, two men, no, it's talking about, it's, uh, there are concepts involved here that you can't really translate into English. That's why it's a real bad job of translating because it's not something you can translate that well. <laughs> So every man uh, is from the tribe, Lamate, the tribe of their fathers, of his father. So each man has a tribe that he comes from, a family that he comes from. Um, so if I, let's say uh, Yochanan has, uh, has two sons, okay? So they, he, they, if he had 12 sons, would they give all 12 positions to his sons? Well, no, because he's just part of the tribes. He's one of the families of the tribe of Israel. So the, the tribes of Israel are 12, but, but uh, the men of Israel name, <laughs> what do what they say, uh, close to a million men? 1.6 million men, okay. So this is talking about each man as a leader, a head of the head household of his father. And so, Tishalak, you shall send coal, every Nasi, every ruler among them. So they are, are all going to be rulers and they're going to be heads of their tribes, heads of their families. Now in verse 3, Vayishlach Otam, and Moses sent them me, me, bar from the wilderness of 
Haran, all P Yahweh, on the word or the mouth of Yahweh. Uh, Kulam, all of them, uh, Anashim, men, heads of the children of Israel. So these are uh, like leaders and heads and rulers of the people of Israel. And they are very familiar and known by the entire nation of Israel. Yes, Ronnie. Uh, well, one of those tribes was Levite, and mm -hmm. a Levite had to go. He was one man. So after those 12 men got back, only two of them gave a good report. Right. So was it a Levite? I see. Ronnie wants to teach his class. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 4. Ele Shemot Lamate Reuven. So Reuven is the first name of, of the tribe. He's the one the tribe is named after, Reuven. And Shemua is the one who is selected to go and represent the tribe of Reuven. Uh, he is son of Zakar, Zakur. Mm -hmm. Right there. Well. Anyway, is the son of Zakur. So, but the guy's name is Shamua. Shamua. Everybody say Shamua. Shamua. And what does that mean? It means that he, he is uh, a person whose primary characteristic is he listens. He listens, okay? And then the next one is Lamate Shimon. Shimon. What is Shimon? It also means emphatically to listen. He's a good listener. Mm -hmm. And Shaphat is the name of the one that's sent. Well, he's a good listener, and that's important for a judge, isn't it? If you're going to be a judge over people, then you have to be able to listen, right? So Shimon has the uh, primary characteristic of listening, and he is the son of Hori. And Hori is the, um, let me just bring that up here. Well, I'm trying. Give me a minute. Um, our Edu Mayan, it means cave dweller. Cave dweller. <laughs> then, then God need all types. Yeah. <laughs> so, here's a guy who also has the listen, and he's from Shaphat. The uh, he is Shaphat, a judge, and he was a cave dweller apparently, or that kind of a characteristic to his nature. <laughs> Cave yeah, and then the tribe of Yehuda. What does Yehuda mean? Yehuda. Yeah, he's a praiser. He worships God. That Yehuda means to praise. Okay, and uh, from the tribe of Judah sent Caleb, Caleb, uh, son of Yehuna. So Caleb means little dog. Who likes dogs? You like dogs, don't you? Oh, yeah, she likes dogs. Ronnie likes dogs. Okay, so uh, Caleb means dog. That's what it means. So he's got a kind of a trusting and uh, uh, obedient nature to him. Okay. And so verse uh, 7, the tribe of Issachar, uh, that was Egal, son of Joseph. So Issachar, let's just look up Issachar so you'll know what the tribe name means. Um, it means he's a bringer of rewards. Issachar means a bringer of rewards. And then we have Egal is the name of the guy who actually went, and it means avenger. He's someone who who has a nature of wanting to uh, straighten things out, so to speak, okay? 
So, and he's from the one who's bringing the reward. So where do you get the reward? From straightening out all those mess. These. <laughs> and of course, Yosef means to, to increase. Okay. And then from the tribe of Ephraim, and we know that Ephraim means, uh, let me get it up here, double fruit. Farim means fruit, plural. Ephraim means double fruit. He's the son of Joseph. Okay. And then the next one is Osea. The tribe of Ephraim was Hosea. And that's the root, how you spell Yeshua, Jesus. Okay. And he was being noon. Isn't it interesting that Hosea was the son of a fish? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Noon means fish in Aramaic. Aramaic is a cousin language to Hebrew. And so Hosea, uh, the letter Nun is the letter of Messiah, heir to the throne. You've got the first letter is a Nun. And we got a vav reaching down, which is like a uh, skinny letter, but it's, it's a vav. It means a shepherd. And so the final letter, nun. And so you got a, a word here that starts with the letter of Messiah and ends with the letter of Messiah, showing him even going into the earth line. And this vav in the middle is God reaching down to the earth from him. Isn't it interesting that Yeshua is connected to the word nun and that... The fish is the symbol that was chosen for him, uh, for Yeshua. And the fish is, uh, you know, essentially, this is the root name of Yeshua right here, root of it. And so it all just ties together too well. Just too well. I love it. So the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin means son of the right hand or strength strength and uh, Palti is the name of the one who was going and I'm going to probably stop going through all the de definitions because it'll take us two years to go through that uh, but Palti actually means delivered he was rescued okay and he's the son of Rafu which means someone who was healed the healer, okay? And then in verse 10, we have uh, from the tribe of Zebulun. Zebulun means literally a habitation. They're going to go look over the land of Canaan and they're going to see where all the houses are. And his name means habitation, a house, okay? And uh, that's the tribe name. Zebulun and Gadiel uh, is the name of the one who's going. He's going to go in and spy out the land. If I can get my pen to work. Okay, Gadiel, and it means the fortune of God. How'd you like to have the fortune of God? Wouldn't that be good? Which one? Which name was that? Gadiel. Gadiel. Yeah. See, here's die in the middle of it, or D. And that means what? What is die, die, ain't it? What is Sufficient. it? Sufficient. Sufficient. So, and get, what is gimel? What does that mean? Does anybody know the letter gimel, what it means? Camel, camel driver, yeah. And so we have Gadiel. He's a camel driver who's sufficient. And, of course, El means God. God, El is the fortune of God. And he's the son of Sodi. Sod means foundation. Foundation or confidence. Okay. So there's a lot of interesting things in these names, isn't there? So the tribe of uh, Joseph... Uh, is the tribe of Manasseh and Gadi, son of Susi. Susi means horse. Mm -hmm. Susi. 
My horse, yeah. Horse-like. Horse-like. Okay. Susi means horse-like. Horses are uh, kind of like dogs a little bit. Once you have them as a pet or as a friend, they are loyal to you, just like a dog. Okay. Uh, Manasseh means um, causing to forget. Causing to forget. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Joseph named him that. Yeah, because it forgot all the pain and the trouble he was going through. So the tribe of Dan, Dan means a judge. Amiel the, is the people of God. And son of Gamili. Gamali. I want to look that one up to make sure I don't give you a false meaning. Believe it or not, I don't know all the meanings of all Hebrew words. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Gamali means camel driver. Gamma, yeah, Gamel means camel driver. Okay. So I knew that one. Uh, let's go over here to uh, 13, verse 13, and from the tribe of Asher. What does Asher mean? It means happy. So this tribe is the happy tribe. What is causing that, do you know? All right, so we have Gamaliel, Gamaliel, and uh, it means reward of God, and of course that's all one we already covered. Okay, so the tribe of happy, we have Satur, and Satur means hidden, it's hidden, and, uh, and the son of Mikael, and war is, means like, uh, he was like God. Mikael, who is like God? Mikael. Me, who is? Ki, like, El, God. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm hmm. And verse 14 the tribe of Naphtali. Naphtali uh, means my wrestling. It means somebody who wrestles. Um, and then the name is Nabi. Nabi. Nachbi. Nachbi. From the, it means from a cult. Uh, an occult. All right, funny enough. It means secret. The secret society. Chava. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and skip back over here to the English so we can get on through this. It says, um, from the tribe of Gad, we have Guel, the son of Maki. And these are the names of the men that Moses sent out to spy out the land. Moshe gave to Hosea, the son of Nun, the name Yehoshua. Yehoshua. And that's uh, one of the names of Yeshua, the Messiah. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, instructing them, go up to the Negev and into the hills and see what the land is like. And notice the people living there, whether they're strong or weak. Did you have a, a solution for it? Well, do you mind using a handheld for the meantime? I, I don't mind. Uh, okay. That's not happening when your batteries are low. It's not low. Oh, okay, well. Just kind of an interference.
Hello. Ah, now it's working. So Moses sent them to spy out the land. What is wrong with sending people to spy out the land? Is there anything wrong with it? Let's put it this way. If you trust in the word of the spies more than you trust in the word of God, there is a problem. Because, see, when you send spies out to bring you back word, then you're trusting in your own judgment rather than in God's judgment. Does that make sense? So Moses sent them to spy the land of Canaan. And, of course, we know that the end of the story was the land was a good land with big, huge grapevines. And the, it was a season for the first grapes to ripen, and they went up and reconnoitred the land from San Desert to Rukov near, Rukov near the uh, entrance to Hamat. And they sent up to the Negev and arrived at Hebron, Achiman, Sheshi, Talmi, and all those other strange names. <laughs> Uh, who on the people who lived there yeah and they found that there were people who were Anakim that lived there what are Anakim giants and uh, they came to Eshkol village what does Eshkol mean it means yeah a cluster of grapes and that was the cluster of grapes that they brought back as a testimony of the food that was in the land and the the grapes were so large. Have you seen grapes at the grocery store lately? Yeah. Have you seen any grapes that are so big that it takes two men to carry it? Yeah. And well, that's the size of the grapes that they brought back from the land. That's a lot of grapes, isn't it? Yeah. You like grapes? You like yeah, you like the green grapes? Well, these grapes were so big that two two grown men carry them on a pole between them that's how heavy they were i don't know but i bet the grapes were probably good size and then they got a big cluster of them and so by the time they're like a cluster that's maybe five or six feet tall on we're talking about one cluster of grapes is big enough to fill a bunch of baskets okay <laughs> I bet you you would have a hard time eating a grape, one grape. Because back then it was bigger. From there they had big, huge grapes. Have you ever seen the movie uh, uh, the Jack and the Beanstalk? You know that uh, the food up there was so huge. Uh huh. Well. We're talking about that kind of a size difference between what we have today and what they have then. Yeah. A chicken like being the size of a cow, right? <laughs> so they got the uh, grapes and brought them back, and that was a witness of how good the food was in the land. And then they, they even brought some figs and pomegranates, and these were all bigger than normal. Okay, and they also took uh, uh. anyway, the people there were giants, like Jack and the Beanstalk's giant, okay, and we were little insects compared to them and in, in our eyes, we thought of ourselves as yeah, and little bitty things, right exactly. If, if uh, Goliath, who was a descendant of the Anakim, would have stood up in his house, uh, his head would be up in the attic in here if he stood up in here. Yeah, it would have made him, his nose would have lost it, and his head would have stood. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he says, um, We entered the land where you sent us, and indeed it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. However, the people living in the land are fierce, and the cities are forfeited, fortified, and very large. Moreover, we saw the Anakim there. Amalek lives in the area of the Negev, and the Hiti and the Yivashi and the Emery live in the hills, and the um, Q 
Keenan and he lived by the sea alongside the Jordan. And Caleb silenced the people around Moses and said, we ought to go up immediately and take possession of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Caleb, you know, that remember, remember that, that means a puppy or a dog. Absolutely. Right. And he's excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. Uh, Oh, we don't want to talk about that. So, okay. <laughs> Grandpa's back there giving this little grimace. Oh. <laughs> so we uh, ought to go up immediately, he says, and take possession. There is no question. We can do it. But the men who had gone with them said, we can't attack those people because they're bigger than we are. And they spread a negative report about the land and that they had wind to spy out for the people of Israel by saying the land we passed through in order to spy it out was a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people we saw there were giants. We saw the Nephilim, the descendants of Anak, who was from the Nephilim. To ourselves, we looked like grasshoppers, and by comparison, we looked like that way to them too. So this is all the people of Israel cried out. They all got upset and in dismay and wept all night long. Oh, we can't go get it. Yeah. So what's wrong with that thinking? Can you tell me what's wrong with it? But who do we have working for us that you can't see? Exactly. Yeah. But, but uh, if God one, two, works two. with us, then I will be able one, to two, see two. Right. It'd be easy to hide from him, wouldn't it? Yeah, because <laughs> he's invisible. Isn't he like a bear or something? Did you ever notice that a, gi a giant is typically very clumsy, too? Have you ever met a giant? No, because giants aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> they actually have giants today. I met a, a guy at a circus one time that his finger, his ring finger, was much larger than my thumb. <laughs> it was like his ring was that big around. Yeah, they, they have a story. It's like a myth where, where, where it's this girl who has a big um, ring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway... At all this, the people cried, and guess what happened? Because they were crying and boohooing and weeping because they couldn't take the land. What do you think happened? Was God happy with them for that? No. No. Remember, we studied that this morning. Remember, it says, if you uh, draw back, then God has no pleasure in you, right? Because you lost the trust. Right. Yeah. You don't trust yeah, God. Yes, you remember. Too. You're on top of it. That's good. Yeah. So, and this is the very reason, Rabbi, that they had to spend forty years in the yes, wilderness. Yes, it is. That's exactly a, a right. Ye a year for a day, forty days in Israel, spying out the land. Forty years in the wilderness. That's yep. a lie. That's just, you're in the wilderness. And they had to go around and get lost all over again, and then find their way back to the land of Israel mm -hmm. they, because they didn't what? What Trust was it they didn't? In God. Exactly. You are correct. You win the prize. What prize? <laughs> Grand prize. <laughs> well, if you live by faith, you get the whole good news from God. All of it. If you live by faith. But you know what? Most people don't. And you'll find out people out in the world will buck you and fight you and tell you you're crazy for trusting God. That's what they say all the time. But we know that it pays to trust God because God promised us a blessing, a reward, if we obey his commandments. And that's the substance of our faith, the substance of the things that we're hoping for. Isn't that awesome? awesome. You are very brilliant. <laughs> I like the way you think, girl. All right, well, that's all we have time for this morning, so we will call that good enough. <laughs> oh, I was just getting into it. <laughs> You're tired, too? Yeah, I want a Shabbat for a while.
All right, well, we'll call that good for today, and we will have our closing ceremony so that you can go rest. <laughs> Take a nap and wake up all refreshed, and then you'll start teaching your friends the stories, right? I uh, know. <laughs> Well, let's have our closing ceremony. Can we have our uh, prophecy care team lead? I got it unmuted now. Come on up and we'll have our uh, Sabbath blessing uh, for the children. No. <laughs> Can I put my hand on your back? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Y'all are cute, but don't tell anybody I said that. Rabbi, you might want to scoot back. Well, just a little bit. Hear. Huh? Well, everybody can hear. Oh, well, maybe they didn't. <laughs> My chair is not cooperating. That's because it's You're on move, okay? Yeah. Go over. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. All right. So this is a Sabbath blessing we do this every shabbat that's every sabbath right and it is the light to speak goodness and blessing to those that will follow after us so we're leaving a legacy and uh and pray that they will be upright and righteous amen yeah. hallelujah are you ready yeah. okay yeah. you can sing along too if you want to if you know this song I bet you may know it and don't know that you know it. There you are. May the Lord protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and like David. May you be deserving of praise. 
faith in Him, O oh Lord, and keep them in Messiah's way. May God bless you and grant you long life. May the Lord fulfill our Sabbath prayer for you. May he send you spouses who will care for you. May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord protect you from pain. Strengthen the Lord with happiness and peace. Oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. Amen. Amen. You can be seated now. It's a delight to have you two with us today. I hope you come again, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can go up to Grandma and Grandpa and say, Please, can I go to go to congregation with you? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll do the ironic benediction first, and then I'll do the okay. blessing of the. Are we all singing? Then? Yeah, a little. Then. Yeah. Okay, ironic benediction, please. There it is. Yavarecha Karanai Vishmarecha. Amen. Yair Adonai Penavalecha Vechunecha. Amen. Yisa Adonai Penavalecha Vayasem Lecha Shalom. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you peace. Oh, Amen. Amen. And I receive it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now for the blessing of the fruit of the vine. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Pri Hagafen Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has created the fruit of the vine. Amen. Amen. The hands. Oh, the hands. Oh, yes. The hands. The hands. <laughs> and ain't the plane, not the plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. It's not. <laughs> la plane, la plane. Baruch Atalanai, Elohim, Elkalah, Mashir, Kichanu, Bamitzvotah, Vitzivanu, Alna, Talat Yadaim. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments. And command us concerning the washing of our hands. Amen. Amen. Now it's the bread time. It's okay. You can come out now, bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tipped over, but it's all right. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Amen. Listen, are you, O Lord, our God, King of the Universe, who brings forth bread from the earth? Amen. Amen. And we'll serve this in the other room. Well, it's been another good Shabbat, and uh, all of you made it 
better just by being here. <laughs> Even the two girls mm -hmm. did a good job. Yes, they're very helpful. Not next Sunday, every Saturday. Okay. <laughs> well, we'd love to have you anytime you can come, okay? <laughs> I'd like to remind everyone that we have a weekly Torah class. And just like what we did this morning, reading out of the scriptures, we go into further detail. And you can ask more questions pertaining to the Torah Parsha. Mm -hmm. And that's Tuesday night, 7 p.m. on our YouTube channel. Give us a like. Subscribe to us. Put the alarm so that you'll be reminded when the next classes will uh, occur. So uh, and also look at our website at tzion.org for further information about upcoming Holy Days and events. The please, next please do remember yes. to like us on YouTube. Yes. You, you get better placements and better help with promoting your site if you get a lot of likes on the, mm -hmm. on the website. Mm. Yes. And, um, uh, oh, so the next Holy Day is Rosh Hashanah. That's the Feast of Trumpets. But actually, it's really called Yom Teruah. Mm -hmm. So prepare yourselves with getting the shofar in place and come prepared before the Lord. Have a good time. And have a good time. Don't come empty-handed. Save up those shekels. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, shalom, y'all. Yes. And we'll see you next time, either Tuesday night or next Shabbat. He may matto the manaim, shabbat the king gum yakad. He may matto the manaim, shabbat the king gum yakad. He may matto, he may matto, la 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 He may matto, he may matto, la 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 Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity, in unity. La 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 la. In unity, in unity. La 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 la. La 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 la. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Shabbat shalom, and we'll see you next week. Shabbat Until next time. Yep, till next see time. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>